Picture a remote tropical paradise. Turquoise blue waters, palm trees, golden sunsets, pristine underwater life. Sharks, turtles, manta rays, stingrays. Have I got your attention? These words describe my day to day for six months while I lived and worked in the field collecting data for my master's and doctoral theses. I was fortunate enough to be one of the few researchers who have worked in the St. Joseph Atoll, which is one of the jewels of the Seychelles. This atoll basically consists of a lagoon that is surrounded by shallow sand flats that are dotted with uninhabited islands. A paradise indeed. But it's not only me that thinks this place is a paradise. Thousands of stingrays, mostly juveniles, spend their days wallowing on the shallow sand flats, trying to avoid the bigger predators that lurk in the deeper waters. There are three species of stingrays that occur in this atoll, and my job was to figure out how they live. More specifically, what they eat and how they move about. We were also very interested in trying to figure out whether this habitat was acting as a nursery to these species, because protecting nurseries can provide big conservation benefits for these animals. So for six months, we lived on Daros, which is actually a small island located one kilometer away from the atoll. And our days in the field would start off by loading up the boat with all of our supplies that we needed because we would have to make the quick boat trip from the island to the atoll. Once there, we could moor the boat in the lagoon, transfer all our equipment into a kayak, which we could easily maneuver over the shallow sand flats, and our hunt for the stingrays would begin. Now, how does one go about catching a stingray? Well, one of the species that we worked on, the porcupine ray, lacks the dangerous sting on its tail, so it's relatively harmless. This meant we could actually sneak up on these guys and try and catch them by hand. And as you can see, this was a super technical process. It involved a lot of running, high precision pouncing, and playing a bit of hide and seek as these stingrays would hide in the sand plumes that they created. Now the other two species of stingrays do indeed have the dangerous stings on their tail. So we couldn't exactly go pouncing on them, otherwise we'd end up like the late unfortunate Steve Irwin. So instead we had to try and file hook them with a fishing rod. And once on the line, we would maneuver them into shallow waters. And sometimes this was no easy task because these individuals could reach over a meter wide and they seriously hit the gym to work on those strong muscles. But eventually they would tire and we could tow them into shallow waters where we would carefully grab hold of the tail to make sure that they could not hurt anybody while we were working on them. We would then flip these majestic sea flap flaps over onto a kayak where we would do either one of two things. So first up, we would surgically implant little trackers into their bellies so that we could track their movements for the upcoming years. Or we would flush their stomachs to essentially collect their vomit so that we could figure out what they were eating. Once we had done this, we would then release the animals so that they could swim off into the sunsets, happy that they had contributed to scientific knowledge. Well, they were probably just pissed off that we stole their dinner. We spent long days in the field, boating around and trekking over the sand flats. We caught little stingrays, we caught big stingrays, and by the end of it all, our total tally was 232 stingrays. Days in the field were long and hard, and by the end of it, we were happy to plonk ourselves on the beach revel in our sense of accomplishment and witness some of the most spectacular sunsets. But while I was here, it wasn't only stingrays and I was lucky enough to help out on numerous other projects. For example, I volunteered on another project that was looking at how juvenile blacktip and sickle lemon sharks live within the atoll. And also I got to help out on the long-term monitoring project of the turtles within the atoll. We also did some substantial scuba diving around Daros Island specifically to monitor the coral reef populations, but one of my favorite experiences was being able to dive with manta rays, which are arguably one of the most graceful creatures in the oceans. And being a pristine ecosystem, along with manta rays, there were a host of other stingrays, turtles, sharks, a variety of fishes, and as my first tropical experience, I have to say it was a magical one. Back on land, I got to release baby turtles into the ocean, which was definitely on my bucket list. And I even got to meet giant Aldabra tortoises, including the second oldest one alive today. These are just some of the highlights of my time in the field. And I am incredibly grateful to the Save Our Seas Foundation for funding my project and allowing me to spend time in this beautiful location. 
In the description of this video, I will provide a link to my project on the Save Our Seas website so you can get more details if you are interested. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with anybody who is interested in marine biology. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram to keep up to date with me. And until next time, I hope you all have a happy day.